Burns from amyamburns.com, an author of Using Technology with Elementary Music Approaches, published by Oxford University Press and available from Oxford and Amazon today. In this episode, I extend from a version one seesaw activity I created a few months ago to this version two. In this episode, I do go over the basics of creating this activity as well as the additional tools such as playxylo.com, Noteflight Learn, and Loom to create this entire activity so that students could use this remotely, hybrid, concurrent, or in-person with restrictions. So like the channel, subscribe, and let's see how we created this today. For this activity version two, we continue with the four plus note songs from version one and we add three more. We add O to Joy and O Busana and Abarata Gisgatem. In this episode, I'm not going to show so much of how to make these because I did that when we did version one. So just check out my YouTube channel and find version one. So I'm just going to show you the basics of what we used in Seesaw, but what I'm also going to show you are some of the additional tools we used to create the songs. So just the basics here in Seesaw. To create this type of tab template, I um, learned this from Chris Shiner, so definitely follow him on YouTube. He does a lot with Seesaw and Google Slides. He was a kindergarten teacher and now he works for Seesaw. So one of the things we first did was change the background, and that's just by clicking the three dots. Then we added a shape. So again, the three dots find this tool. Now I use this because Chris had used it, and he used it, I think he liked the round edges of it. Change the color by using the slider, and then lock it. Now to create the tabs, I grab the shape, the same one, and I put it over here to the side. Then I might resize it, and then I would duplicate to how many tabs that I need. So when I'm duplicating them, I don't lock them yet because I'm going to change their color. So I was using, here we go. I was using um, rainbows over here, so I was kind of doing it this way with the red, the orange, and the yellow. And that's how I did that. Now to make it so that they are behind this white por portion, because this is the cover. So I want the tabs not to be on top of the cover, but inside the cover. So again, I go to the three dots and order these to the back very similar to any other program that you've been using, whether you're ordering over in Google Slides or even going back to, to notebook, smart notebook, and ordering and layering our items. So I've ordered them. Now I want this tab so that when you click on it, it goes to a new page. Now, for you to have multiple pages here in this activity, you need to have the paid version. If you don't have the paid version, my suggestion would you be create separate activities for each song. But we do have the paid version, so now I want this red one. I did this every time. I don't know if you do it too, but when I go back to a page, it defaults to this drawing tool, and I want it to be the hand tool. <laughs> there we go. I click on the tab, and then the three dots, and link. I'm going to ask it to link to page two. Now when you hit it, it will go right over to page two, and you can put your song on the page. So let's go back to the original activity here and see how that's all done. On the first tab here, I didn't make it quite red because I wanted the background to match the tab color, which wasn't red. It's very odd that they don't have a red background, but they don't in Seesaw. So here is how they can learn to split the screen in the Chromebook because they're going to need that for this activity. The orange tab is a video of me showing how to split the screen in an iOS. So little tip here, iOS splitting the screen is a little bit more challenging than the Chromebook splitting the screen. However, this is probably older elementary you, you would use this with because it's four plus notes. Actually, it's either five or eight or nine notes in these songs, these particular songs. 
So they probably can split the screen okay without having too much to rely on a caregiver helping them. So those are the first two tabs. Then you would click and go right into Ode to Joy. So let's look how we created things here on the Ode to Joy page. Just one little note. You notice I'm constantly hitting the little home button. I did create a home button so that any time they moved to a tab, they were able to jump back and see the original directions. On this page with Ode to Joy, we have the song in Boomwhacker Colors. We have a video and we have the link that goes to the website that they have to split. So if you go to that link, you'll notice that we are here in playxylo.com colors equal boomwhacker. So I've already set it up so it's going to be boomwhacker colors. And to do that, I just made sure the link I included had boomwhacker checked. If it's not checked, it will go back to xylophone colors that come with some of the xylophones you purchase. In addition, you can make it solfege or a chromatic scale. We love playxylo.com. So they have this link. That again was just adding a link. Going over here, link, and putting in playxylo.com. And then it created this and put the thumbnail in there. Hopefully it's going to pick a good thumbnail. If not, you can put a picture over the thumbnail it chooses. Now here, Ode to Joy is in Boomwhacker colors. So what I did there was I went into my NoteFlight account. Now my students and I have NoteFlight Learn, so we do have this through music first. If you are using the free version of NoteFlight, you will not be able to access the colors. That is in uh, a paid version. But what you do is you find the color menu and make sure it's checked so that it's up here. But when you look at the color menu, you'll notice that if you scroll down, those are the Boomwhacker colors, the ones they label classroom. Now to create the Boomwhacker colors, what I do is I highlight the note. Now, little trick in Mac is if you hold the command key, you can click all throughout and find all your C's and click them all at once. Then just click the red and it will change all of them red. And of course D is orange. Now obviously that metro isn't there, but that's just to help you figure out, um, I wanted to show you how to do that in NoteFlight. Now as we go back over here into Seesaw, I did this in NoteFlight, I exported it as a PDF, and then on a Mac it's quite easy, I can go right into Preview and export the PDF as a JPEG. Of course you can Google it and just say, change convert PDF to JPEG and you will find online cloud-based programs that will do it for you for free. So then I just put it in here, I made the green and put it on top of the green. Everything is locked and in addition, if you notice here, I put on a blank clear screen over it so that it wouldn't be so easy for the students to manipulate. You'll see it on the corners right over here and that's just using a text tool putting in something like one letter, then resizing it, and then delete the letter and lock it. That will work and hopefully make it a little bit harder for the students to manipulate if you have students like that. This is a Bitmoji coming off of Facebook, and this little quote tool is here in the shape, so you can find that right there. So when I put in these little directions, you'll notice that I'm using icons. That's not too challenging to do. If you double click and put in um, a text tool, and on a Mac, it's Control, Command, Spacebar, you can access your emojis. So that's where I like to find the check button, the play button, a microphone tool, the tabs with colors. That's how I do it. Now over here, I made um, a demo so that all they had to do was click the purple over here and it played. Now to create that, I went over to Play Xylo, made sure it was in the Boomwhacker colors, and used Loom. You could use Screencastify, Screencast-O-Matic, any of these um, recording tools, these video recording tools. And so I just made sure Loom was not accessing the internal microphone, but it was sourcing the audio. And because it did that, I could play it and then I downloaded that and put it right here inside, embedded it inside in Seesaw. And that's how that page was made. 
So again, it's just using Note Flight because it had the Boom Whacker colors. If you don't have Note Flight, but if you have other composition tools, they might have Boom Whacker colors embedded them in, in, them, in them as well, such as Sibelius. Um, then I, this was created in Loom, but you could use any screen recording tool to create this. And then this is just a link. And so that is how I did that. I just changed the background, but kept the same type of frames on the page and did the same thing and then finished with this last song. And that is how I created that. I hope that helps you out because it's great to use when someone gives you a, a lesson, it's great to use it, but there are times when you want to cater that lesson to the curriculum you're using and the approach you're using might be Orschulich, it might be Conversational Solfege by Dr. Fire Robin. Maybe you're using Zoltan Kodai's approach. Maybe you're having a combination of a variety of approaches. Maybe you're using Denise Gagne's music play online, but you're looking for a way to create an activity from one of those songs there. So again, this all can be done this way, and I hope this gave you some ideas on how you can create your own for your own students. So like the channel, subscribe, and check back next week where our episode will include a variety of ways to use the new audio features that are included in Seesaw. Hope you have a wonderful week.